Hi everybody, I'm Serge K. Kidembe and thanks for joining me for the weekly US market report. Time to trade the markets, the week ahead, perspectives and analysis. This is for the trading week beginning on Monday, September the 25th until Friday, September the 29th of 2017. First, we're going to have a look at the economic calendar. Next, we're going to take a look at some news globally since uh, you know that uh, on this particular weekend we had in Germany we had uh, government elections and a lot of uh, stuff uh, going on the UN uh, summit and much 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 more so we're gonna have a look at some uh, news to uh, generate some ideas on uh, what it's making uh, what it's trending what uh, what are the buzzwords and uh, the buzz uh, the buzz around uh, some companies next we're gonna have a look at the uh, S&P 500 sectors map and then we're going to finish with some uh, technical analysis and price action okay so without further ado let's begin and over here you already know our website is uh, in full effect is right now open and so you can pay us a visit at www.jctream.com uh, uh, slash solution in English here Clicking by clicking on the banner, you're gonna be uh, uh, redirect the, uh, the directly uh, to our uh, English speaking uh, section page. Okay, so you can, you're gonna uh, take your time and have a look at our solutions and our services, and also at all of the uh, companies we're working with over here in Europe. So take your time and you know over here you have my personal contacts uh, these are our contacts so you can contact me there's a number exclusively for our whatsapp users and viber and also facebook messenger so don't hesitate or send us a message over here and we're going to be glad to uh, inform you and help you okay first of all let's begin over here with the economic calendar Today on uh, Sunday, September the 24th of 2017, federal election in Germany. And you already know that uh, Mrs. Merkel and her party uh, won the election. So that's it. And now, uh, what are the effect of that effect on the uh, um, index? The, that's the DAX 30, German index, the DAX, and also the euro. So uh, for you guys who are trading the euro and stuff like that and all the euro crosses, so pay uh, close attention to that because you're going to have a lot of movement uh, following uh, that particular election. Okay, and tomorrow on Monday, September the 25th, why, uh, what do we have? We have in Germany, we have the IFO business climate for September. Next, on Tuesday, September the uh, 26th of 2017, what do we have? We are back in the U.S. and in the U.S. we have new home sales from August. And on Wednesday, uh, September the 27th, we have the, uh, back in the U.S., we have durable goods orders month on month from August. Okay, and that's it. And also now, I think that we are entering in our earning season. So we're going to have a look at uh, companies who, who are uh, go, uh, going to uh, report earnings. And what do we have exactly over here for this week from September 25th until Friday, September the 29th. Uh, on the 25th over here in the U.S., nothing of great importance, but on September the 26th, what do we have? The 26th, uh, we have over here Micron Technology and Nike. Those two are huge. And next on September the 27th, over here, nothing very, very important. And over here, September the 28th, what do we have with Accenture over here in Ireland? And for the US, what do we have? Nothing, but yeah, uh, the big ones and the important company earning season really really uh, picking off and starting in october so yes so remember in october we're gonna have a huge uh, companies beginning with the banks we see over here all the uh, financial sector so we're gonna have a look at that next week so now that's okay and now uh, let's have a look now at some news over here first of all let's go to markets 
dot uh, businessinsider dot com, and over here, let's have a look at uh, what it's hot, what it's uh, trending. You see over here, Tesla. Tesla, no question. There's uh, there's no question that Tesla's future is all about China. Over here, Tesla. Over here, Trump. Time is running out for Trump to make a big decision that will shape his uh, economic legacy. And third one over here at uh, the far right, Jalen is misjudging uh, the strength of the job market and it could derail the recovery. Next, so we have the Federal Reserve, so you know that's impacting the dollar uh, and the stock market, the overall market, and also Tesla and uh, President Trump talking about uh, his economic reform, infrastructure building, a weaker dollar and uh, tax cuts. Okay, so that's all about markets, all about uh, the um, dollar and uh, treasury bonds and stuff like that. Okay, and over here, the stocks, best performing stocks for the week and worst performing stock over here for the last session, excuse me. And now over here, what else is trending? We see over here Facebook, Mr. Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO, over here CEO of Tesla, Mr. Elon Musk, and over here Walmart. So let's pay, uh, let's read. A power struggle between Facebook and investors just ended with Facebook dropping plans to issue non-voting shares. Okay, so that's a good catalyst over here. The second one for Tesla. Tesla is seeing a fourth straight day of losses after hitting an all-time high on Monday. And over here, uh, Walmart's customers say uh, there's um, not a chance in hell that let Walmart enter their homes to deliver groceries to the fridge. Oh, okay, so that's it. Next, let's move on on commodities. And over here, one more time. Mr. Elon Musk, but uh, this time is for his uh, other company, Solar City. Solar City, which is now owned by Tesla, will pay a $29.5 million to settle allegations that it tried to cheat the government. Okay, and uh, this one, well, uh, here's a super quick gu uh, guide to what traders are talking about uh, right now. And over here, California. California cities uh, sue big oil firms over climate change. The firm involved are Chevron, and over here you see ExxonMobil, over here you see BP. So the uh, big majors. Now currencies, remember German elections, and over here. What's next? And over here, let's have a look. Uh, there's a surprising winner for China's ban on North Korean coal. Okay, very in interesting. Over here, Wilbur Gross. China sent a very powerful message to North Korea and over here for uh, right Mr. Jimmy D, uh, Demon, CEO of uh, JP Morgan and Chase. Jimmy Demon bashes Bitcoin again, says cryptocurrencies are kind of a novelty. Okay, and over here when you see the performance, last performance, you see over here Bitcoin versus the US dollar, Ethereum versus the US dollar. So uh take in consideration that they are considered as currencies but not for everyone but uh, the case is that they're listed here okay now the bond markets and the uh, rates what do we have over here mr fisher janet jelen's right hand man is hanging up his boots mr fisher is living in october over here in the center, we have uh, Goldman Sachs CEO, Mr. Lord Blankfein. Goldman Sachs has a plan for its uh, misfiring bonds business. And over here, Mr. Gary Cohn and Mr. Steve Mnuchin. Trump is reportedly unlikely to consider nominating Gary Cohn as the next Fed chair. Okay, so let's see in, if in uh, 2018, uh, Mrs. Janet Jelen is going to uh, be uh, one more time the Fed chair for the uh, U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve Bank. And over here, uh, yeah, same as in last week, so nothing new over here. Okay, so that's it over here for Markets Insider. And now let's take a, a look at more broad and international news. Over here you see Merkel win. German elections, you see Euro falls as Merkel faces German coalition test after win. Over here, Germany, so Germany, Germany, Germany. Remember the DAX 30 and uh, the Euro. Over here, trending, what's trending? You see the UN summit at the UN, North Korean minister says Trump the one on, on the suicide mission. Over here, Brexit, so more things about Brexit. Oh yeah, 
uh, this particular news is huge. Uh, Uber regroups after London taxi setback. Uh, they're no longer going to have the license to drive and to operate and to uh, deliver services in uh, Great Britain. So that's huge for the company. Over here in Spain, more politics, uh, Catalan police uh, face a pressure as Spain cracks down on separatists. You see that uh, Catalonia is trying to separate from uh, Spain and to become a, a sovereign country. You see as Vatican City, as Liechtenstein, as uh, Andorra and Malta, Gibraltar and stuff like that. So uh, that's huge over here. Next, what do we have next of great importance? Oh yeah, over here. What do we have? North Korea, a bomb is deterring U.S. first strike, Rus uh, Russia says over here. Markets, Fidelity says U.S. remain sticking point on MIFID uh, research over here. Saudi women sit in the stadium for first time in uh, at anniversary gala. Okay. B Bloomberg uh, Business Week. Okay. Now over here. One more time, Facebook over here, Nestle makes billions bottling water it pays nearly nothing for. Over here, one more time, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Facebook over here, uh, Mrs. Merkel election. So remember, Germany, the DAX 30, Euro stocks 50 also, Euro stocks 600 also. Take a look at the sectors and, uh, and also the Euro, okay? Over here for oil markets, Iran says OPEC actions on outputs cuts most uh, address Libya and Nigeria. Over here you see uh, Germany, over here more Germany, and what else over here? Yeah, more uh, more Brexits over here. Uh, Brexit, Brexit, yeah, mortgage and stuff like that. Uh, German election, well, we cover that. UK business, yeah, Uber, the problem with Uber. And boom, boom, boom. Okay, nothing more. Okay, so that's it. Okay, that's it for the news. And now let's have a look at the uh, SP 500 sectors map and let's interpret. Let's give let me give you my interpretation and what's taking place and what took place in the market last week. Okay, first of all, what do we see? Technology like a 50 50. Okay, over here, great week for telecom services, uh, ATT and Verizon services 50 50. Uh, big losses for the uh, big players, Amazon, Walmart over here. Basic materials in green, healthcare in red. Utilities 100% red, bad week. Uh, industrial goods in green, great week, except for over here you see uh, 3M Company and Danaher Corporation. Consumer goods in red, totally in red. You see uh, Apple, boom, now closer to the $150 a share. So huge, huge, huge uh, sell off for Apple despite the launch of the new uh, Apple uh, iPhone X and iPhone 8, new uh, uh, iWatch or whatever. And that's it. Bad week for consumer goods and Apple, the worst performing stock on the uh, this particular sector and on its industry. And over here, the financials, great week for the financials, great week for the money center banks, great week for the investment banks, credit services, asset management, and everything. So now let's have a look at the uh, ETFs. Okay, over here, ETFs, ETFs. Okay, boom, okay. Indices, flat week over here, sectors uh, red, you see already uh, saw it, red for healthcare, red for real estate, sorry, over here, red for utilities, red for consumer cyclicals, uh, technology flats, great for energy and great for uh, financials, consumer cyclicals in, uh, is flat, industrials, uh, great week for industrials and also for basic materials. The large cap 50-50, US uh, mid cap green, US small cap uh, great. The invert over here, the XIV and stuff like that in green and the VIX in red, okay? International everything in green except for the Asian Pacific, Brazil, over here, emerging markets in red, uh, Latin and Japan uh, in green, Russia in red, India in red, 
over here global industrial real estate ETF over here in red global miners in red the inverted in green e over here technology C hack you know, still at $30 energy in green over here commodities everything in green you see the GLD and SLV in green and USO spiking going up okay so that's it and now here for the fixed income flat week you see a uh, flat week in uh, government bonds and flat week in, for the corporate bonds flats uh, almost positive but flat you see that uh, equilibrium over here so indecision week okay so that's it for uh, the stock markets and now let's jump right into it and let's go and do uh, some and let's do some charts now okay so let me download my presets and let's begin okay my presets this one yeah i'm gonna drink a little water waiting for the charts to okay here we are okay now let's begin with the dow jones industrial average okay 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 here we are and what are we seeing for the dow jones industrial average uh -huh. let me zoom in let me amplify it so we can see what's happening and what's happening with the dow jones industrial average but as you can see gap up indecision we gave back 50% of all the gains, close at 22,350, uh, and that's an aisle over here. So now what I'm expecting, you need to expect to see exactly the same thing over here. Now sideways movements, and then boom, we're going to uh, go back lower. We need interaction with the uh, four weeks moving average over here. You see exactly at the 50% of that particular uh a bullish bar over here and that's also the uh, max over here at uh, 22,095 uh, points so that's uh, I think that now we're gonna come back there's a higher probabilities that we're gonna come back over here come back lower and we test that particular level as a uh, support there's a great 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 potential to be a, a support maybe we can go a little bit lower to see to we test over here the uh, eight weeks moving average and maybe by that time that uh, 13 weeks moving average is going to reach uh, the uh, 22k region so that's a a good level for a uh, for uh, for testing that particular support and from there bands back up okay so now I'm expecting markets to go lower okay so that's it dow jones sideways movements and then going lower now let's continue let's move on nasdaq 100 and the x and the x over here and the x and the x and the and the x okay let me zoom in the technicals what is the price action bum, bum, bum. okay ndx you see over here that particular uptrend channel you see supports resistance supports resistance that's higher lows and higher highs over here but now we're far away from that channel's resistance and now we are heading uh, towards the uh, channel's support you see over here we have a gap so uh, the probabilities are going back lower you see that week it failed we stayed up we are uh, still at the uh, in the uh, upper parts of that particular bear, uh, bullish candle over here but you see um, with a lot of indecision third week in a row in a inside week candle so now you see exactly the same pattern we can roll over and going back uh, over here 
at uh, 5880 you see we rejected the uh, uh, 6000 points and now maybe uh, not maybe now first of all we have a close over here let me zoom in you see close over here below the four weeks moving average and now over here uh, what are we expecting now over here we are expecting uh, to see what's over here you see interaction with the eight weeks moving average and here 13 weeks moving average and maybe come down here bounce and then going back up okay so that's it for the nasdaq uh 100 i'm expecting to see i'm expecting to see uh, more moves towards the downside now the uh, us 500 that's your s p 500 okay over here okay let me put it right like that okay 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 and over here you see indecision that's a, a great dojo over here right at uh, 2500 points and now what can we expect markets to go down first sideways movement and we see over here interaction with the four weeks moving average and eight weeks moving average so now i'm expecting the markets to go down okay that's huge indecision and we need a direction so pay attention above the uh, 2510 we go higher but uh, pay attention because we can uh, they can set up a uh, bullish trap you see over here boom faking and then boom uh, crashing the market so pay attention to that so be careful and be cautious you see but now me i'm expecting i'm seeing um, below 25 no below 2490 huge potential to go much lower first of all to interact with the four weeks moving average and then with the eight weeks moving average and remember we have a gap over here so that's it let's zoom in a little bit okay you see over here gap boom that region over here and the 13 weeks moving average at 2460 points okay so that's it i'm expecting sideways movements in decision and if the markets uh, take a decision uh, i see a more potential to go uh, south so uh, the markets are gonna roll over and go down okay now let's have a look at the vix volatility index okay over here vix and you see vix the vix remains lower now we are uh, we are at 9 uh, 959 and we remain lower here at the historical lows and next week uh, Mm, for the next week wow it's tough you see because take a look at all the uh, moving averages they have no direction they're horizontal so that means sideways movements so we're going to remain between 9 and 10 and maybe 9 and 11 and you see over here trying to interact with the four weeks moving average uh, rejected it and uh, remains lower much 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 lower so uh, the market is going to remain on that level but at any time you can have a huge spike and boom the markets can uh, can crash pretty pretty uh, quickly and that's it okay so uh, pay attention and be cautious okay now let's move on the xiv now xiv over here xiv and xiv boom xiv over here we see that huge bearish candle one two three four five six six week in a inside week candle we've gone nowhere only to cancel that particular bearish candle now we are back here at the top at the whole time highs at close to 96 points but you see with a lot of uh, um, not a lot of strength 
it's too shy and not enough power but we are above all the uh, major um, moving averages and over here you see gap up and now uh, we are closer to the all-time highs but with a very very uh, shy you can see with uh, no power at all so now what i'm expecting i'm expecting the markets to trying to break but it can roll over you see that particular level can be rejected and then you can see uh, you can see the xiv going lower so the points can be you see like this trying to go higher and then boom came back and interact with the moving averages over here close to the 85 uh, level or maybe break higher and go much higher but now you see that particular bar was too 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 heavy well that's a, a bearish decision candle and you see now anything can happen we are still uh, I'm still seeing that as a uh, bearish uh, play. Okay. You see, that's it. That's a high and a lower high, but let's see if we can go higher or we reject that particular level, reject the $94, and then boom, go back lower. So now we are at resistance close to resistance so expect sideways movement and maybe some fake you see you can see some spikes over here over that particular level and then boom trying to go back lower what we need to see next week we need a perfect bullish candle strong bullish candle over here a close above those particular levels or above 95 50 okay closer to 96 okay let's move on now let's have a look at small caps mm -hmm. small caps okay the russell what about the russell and you see over here the russell russell doing great going higher ending the month of september in a uh, bullish note in a positive note you see remember over here we still have that particular gap but boom higher above the all-time highs and now you see a strong bullish candle over here above the uh, 1440 and now at 40 uh, 1450 so maybe you can have uh, a continuation another gap up over here but things can change direction very very quickly and expect a a interaction with uh, moving averages maybe you're gonna have another week or a flat week a, an indecision week in order to uh, in order to see uh, the uh, four weeks moving average catching up and then maybe one to two weeks uh, side with sideways movements and then trying to interact with that particular uh, moving average over here so expect more uh, moves towards the upside but pay attention because you can have uh, bullish traps you see stronger stronger move towards the upside and then boom rejecting and uh, uh, you see uh, giving back all the gains so uh, pay attention to that that's called uh, bullish traps and uh, at that particular level over here uh, we tend to see at max highs we can have like two weeks in a row uh, with that particular setup and that's gonna uh, illustrates and demonstrates and give us confirmation of a particular pattern that's called a tweezer top and that particular uh, that pattern you see uh, is always uh, followed by by a uh, move towards the downside so that's a, a bearish setup okay so that's it now let's move on and let's have a look at the uh, bonds uh, first of all let's begin with the uh, ty that's your uh, 10 year treasury notes okay and over here you see bearish 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 as i said last week bearish sentiment you see we rejected the uh, 128 rejected the uh, 104 weeks uh, moving averages or and over here boom get below the 12 weeks mo uh, weeks moving average uh, four weeks moving average eight weeks moving average and you see that it now we are back at the channel's resistance uh, channel's support excuse me at 126 and that's it so expect maybe we can go much lower 
and you can see something like this oh, excuse me something like boom like this for next week and like that okay to try to retest that particular support over here but remember bearish candle uh, that's a bullish reversal and a, a almost an engulfing bullish so really the floor the support is at 125.50 okay remember that okay so you see if we can have um, another bully, uh, bearish candle over here so we can go much lower uh 125.50 and 125 that's my target another bearish week in the bonds in for the treasury notes excuse me now let's have a look at the uh at the 30 year treasury bond this one and that's exactly the same thing you see over here uptrending channel you see resistance resistance supports rejecting the resistance you see over here that's your 104 weeks moving average four weeks moving average you see over here rejection that's a, bear, a bearish rejection boom over here what do we have close below the four weeks moving average eight weeks moving average and take a look here convergence at 156 convergence between the uh, four weeks moving average and eight weeks moving average if the four weeks moving average crosses below boom it's going to go after the 13 weeks moving average and take a look over here what do we have we have the uh, 21 weeks moving average and uh, converging with the uh, 52 weeks moving average and also the uh, 26 week uh, weeks uh, moving average so that's a bearish setup and we can go much 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 lower and i see the 153 and 150 uh, 151 over here 151 dollars over here so next week i'm expecting more moves toward the downside from here to here and take a look that's our 208 weeks moving average in so we can go much lower over here that's the region of your 208 weeks moving average take a look over here pivot points pivot point number one pivot points number two and now maybe pivot points number three okay that's a retest of that particular uh, support zone support level okay so expect move move towards the downside for the uh, bond in the bond market okay so if you see lower bonds prices that means higher higher uh, yields okay and now let's take a look at the dixie dxy that's your us dollar index remember the news that we saw earlier with uh, merkel and stuff like that you see uh, inside week scandal three week in a row no direction but take a look over here close let me amplify first of all here take a look now here close you see convergence between the two weeks moving average here in green and that's your uh, four weeks moving average convergence over here rejected inside week candle you see that bearish candle over here one two three weeks inside week candle now we are back at the uh, top of the uh, the opening of the bearish candle over here at 92 we retested it but we are above the four weeks moving average and above eight weeks moving average so now we can we're we gonna see the dollar strengthening and maybe the news the, the catalyst uh, can be uh, that particular news we saw earlier uh, with the test for the uh, Merkel administration over there over here in uh, the EU and then uh, maybe we're going to see starting to see the uh, euro uh, depreciating and uh, weakening and all uh, that means a, a stronger US dollar okay the dollar can go up so maybe that's the uh, catalyst okay so that sits over here and boom so that's it for the dollar expect the dollar maybe to go higher or to remain in that particular range over here you see with uh, 92.70 as a resistance and 91.50 as support okay so that's it for our uh, US markets and now let's have a look at energy and let's begin with uh, commodities 
the uh, crude oil WTI futures. Over here, you see a great week in the uh, energy sector, great week for everybody. Now we have, what do we have over here? We have oil at $50 a barrel. Now the market is open and what can we see what can we expect you see over here that pivot point over here that's our resistance at 5061 you see rejected it here at that particular level but now i'm expecting the market to go much higher so i'm gonna place some orders over here above uh, 51 because i'm expecting um, one more great uh, one more great uh, bullish candle over here but take a look at the four weeks moving average crossing we see the convergence point there's a turbulence zone over here but now we are out of that particular turbulence you see over here that's your four weeks moving average crosses above crossing above the uh, 52 weeks moving average and then boom going higher you see 45 uh, degrees angle so that's very very bullish but you need the right catalyst so now if uh, we see uh, I cannot say uh, the dollar or if the dollar continues to uh, fall down that's a that's a push for the oil price but now if we see the dollar is going uh, regaining uh, its power and going back higher it's gonna push uh, commodities prices uh, lower so uh, pay close, close attention to that and also all the catalysts that we see OPEC nations and what's happening over there uh, in the Middle East and also Venezuela and stuff like that. You see all uh, all uh, related countries and so pay re close attention to that. That's going to be a, a great uh, catalyst, you see. Okay, so that's it for oil. I'm expecting above $51 a barrel. I'm, I'm bullish, but if it goes lower, below 49 I'm going to be bearish, okay? So that's it, but for now I remain bullish. I, I want to see oil above uh, $51 and to going back higher towards uh, 50 to 50. Okay, so that's it for oil. Now let's have a look at gold. Gold futures, okay. And gold, 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 remember, an aisle you see exactly the same thing with the stock market gap up an aisle and then boom going back lower you see boom 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 all our uh, all the gains uh were, were lost but now we are here take a look gap up fill the gap interaction with the four weeks moving average take a look 50 percent over here boom below that particular level and take a look now the four weeks moving average it's pointing down Eight weeks moving average pointing up so we have a convergence points closer you see over here 50 percent of that particular bullish candle take a look that's your 1350 and then boom you see below that level you see take a look at the spread between the eight weeks moving average and 13 week uh, moving average that's a huge spread and continuation so now what i'm expecting for gold gold to go much lower to be test first of all take a look at that pivot point over here uh, 1293 and over here 1280 so take a look that's the region below the 13 weeks moving average and that's between 13 weeks moving average and 21 and 26 so that that's 1280 so now i'm expecting gold to go lower to go over here and to come to 1280 that's it and that's 1280 maybe starting to bounce back up but we need confirmation confirmation is going to be a close you see with a green candle a bullish candle above the four weeks moving average at that particular level if it doesn't happen boom we're going to go much lower first of all we need a stop in short selling accumulation phase you see uh, we need to go to bottom over here and then confirmation for a potential buy okay so next target 1280 that's still bullish for a gold that's just a distribution you see distribution we need one candle of cancellation and one two three of uh, for the movement you see over here we already have the movement one two maybe another one three and we're gonna see what's gonna happen okay so gold bearish on gold 
Now let's have a look at uh, silver, and for silver it's going to be exactly the same thing. Silver futures, okay. Now you see over here silver, bam bam bam, already in bearish mode. You see over here we reach our target, but now we can go much lower. So let's have a look to see if we have another pivot point, something like that and nothing the only pivot point we have over here that's our first of all we have the 1260 uh, no, uh, 1660 uh, 1660 and 1615 uh, over here so now i'm expecting silver to go much 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 lower like that first target that particular region and then from here boom okay maybe to do a a b c d but uh, pff, that's not a big gap but we never know maybe silver can go much lower but first of all first target 1650 okay so bearish on silver also and now let's have a look at the uh, crypto cryptos crypto coin and first of all let's have a look at the top 10 ranking and market capitalization and over here you see number one ethereum market cap of 27 billion I see number two falling bitcoin you see take a look at the charts all the charts are the same except for dash at number three bitcoin now uh, it was closer to 80 billion dollars of uh, market cap now uh, fall almost 20 billion and now we are at 61 billion you see 3600 dollars over here number three dash dash is rising going up over here uh, litecoin at number four litecoin also in a uh, bearish trend bitcoin cash market cap of close to seven billion and also going down heavily number six omisego over here also going down market cap of 1.2 billion number seven ripple ripple also going down Mm, and market cap closer to 7 billion number eight ethereum classic also going down market cap of close to 1 billion and number nine monero also going down market cap of 1.3 uh, billion and number 10 iota also going down but now bottoming and trying to uh, regain momentum and with a market cap at war, uh, close at uh, of 1.1.4 billion us dollars okay so now let's have a look at the technicals for the uh, crypto cryptos and we're going to focus first of all let's have a look at uh, bitcoin bitcoin versus the us dollar you already know all the news we saw uh, lately uh, with jimmy demon you see uh, talking trash about bitcoin uh, we have a summit a bitcoin and crypto uh, currency summit in hong kong uh, and i saw a great interview of mr john mcafee over there you know that now he's involved in a uh, mining uh, he has a mining company over there in hong kong and talking about all the stuff going on with the regulations the pboc over there in china uh, the icos banning uh, exchange problems and stuff like that heavy regulations and uh, manipulation of prices a lot of fraud uh, is going down uh, is going uh, going on uh, down there or, or over there and now a huge problem and you see uh, that's for the benefits of the institutionals and the big players but because now everybody uh, had the opportunity to enter the bitcoin at uh, three thousand dollars you see that's a great great, great uh, price for them and the uh, distribution is still uh, going on see uh, we have a fake recovery and now we're still below that particular level still below the 38 and 3800 and 1400 or 4800 excuse me and uh, let me zoom in a little bit so now I'm, uh, I'm gonna i'm gonna explain what i meant last week for those of you who are following me every week you see over here we have a cross between the four weeks moving average and the eight weeks moving average over here and that's a bearish signal and now we are going to see the four weeks moving average is going after the 13 weeks moving average to meet over here and that's a convergence point close to $3,600 so you see 
um, we had a pivot point over here at uh, three thousand uh, dollars back in uh, back in June of uh, yeah back in June of twenty seventeen at the beginning of the summer and now we are we have here that particular spike you see that long tail long shadow touching that same level you see that's too uh, perfect to be organic you see so that's the uh, the mark and the uh, the touch of the institutionals the hedge funds uh, big banks uh, investment banks and stuff like that they're entering the game and now take a look that's also a pointer but that it's a pointer and that pointer you're gonna see more moves toward the downside over here maybe we can bounce from here and go higher if we have a close a close with a bullish candle above the four weeks moving average and also above the uh, eight weeks moving average and roughly here above uh, uh, yeah, four thousand dollars but in the, in the other case if not we're gonna go much lower and back over here uh, three thousand dollars bounce from there and from there going up you see we have a potential of a two thousand dollars gains first of all from three thousand towards uh four thousand forty six hundred and uh five uh, five thousand dollars so that's a huge potential so uh first of all they buy the dips over here that's the first accumulation but the next accumulation phase will be taking place over here close to thirty and thirty two hundred dollars okay so expect the bitcoin price to uh, go much lower okay so now bitcoin let's have a look at the gbtc gbtc bitcoin investment trusts you see and over here what do we have you see exactly the same thing you see boom 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 bitcoin going nowhere you see over here close you see what I've meant you see huge spikes over here that's a tweezer top and over here maybe a tweezer bottom but I don't think so you see that's our uh, last uh, resistance level now supports so we need a close with a complete body a candle with a complete body close to uh, $500 over here you see interaction with the 13 weeks moving average and also take a look over here what do we have we have the four weeks moving average going lower and trying to interact with the eight weeks moving average and then next what do we i'm expecting next to, uh, what do we expect we want to see a close with a complete uh, a candle with a complete body below the uh, eight weeks moving average and that's going to open the door for more uh, for a potential uh, uh, bearish move and to see first of all the gap to fill that particular gap over here and take a look that the region of the 21 weeks moving average here at uh, 475 and that's it and bounce from there that's also our past resistance now supports bounce bounce from here and going back higher first of all towards the eighth uh, hundred dollars and next towards the uh, 1k okay so that's it for the bitcoin now let's have a look we're gonna have a look at ethereum over here eth usd ethereum so yeah, yeah next we're gonna do, do uh, litecoin ethereum and dash and that's it over here ethereum so ethereum you see over here that's bullish channel you see uh, support resistance supports over here resistance we rejected that resistance and now we are here at channel support you see inside we candle inside we candle all the major uh, moving averages are here and going sideways except for the four weeks moving average crossing below the eight weeks moving average and that's a bearish signal so now me i'm expecting this but also that in red you have your channels resistance channels support uptrending but also over here we have what we call a a uh, what we call a uh, bullish flag okay you see over here 
boom that's your bullish flag so that's the first leg and i'm expecting a second leg over here that's your the first phase of the distribution second phase of distribution maybe you can bounce from here and go higher because that's uh, lows higher lows higher lows but now we have uh, uh, and uh, but over here what do we have we have a high and now we have a lower high so you see that makes a perfect uh, flag over here so first leg second leg that's also an a b c region and now we're gonna go much higher for a d region first of all we need to go back over here towards uh, 370 dollars and then break below or uh, break above that particular resistance to go much higher towards 500 dollars you see exactly my max my projection for ethereum that's uh 520 dollars okay but first of all we need confirmation over here and now we are still in the inside week uh, candle type of pattern and we have uh, that there, there's still a great potential for uh, to see more lower prices for ethereum okay so that's it for ethereum indecision complete indecision we need a direction but much higher probabilities to see lower prices now let's move on uh dash okay dash no dash us dollar dash us dollar over here okay dash versus the us dollar that's exactly the same thing well kind of the same thing uh it's uh, like a ethereum you see low uh, you see a b c boom trying to go to the d inside week candle over here distribution you see we rejected the 13 weeks moving average close above the eight weeks moving average but now over here now close above the four weeks moving average sideways uh, movement trying to go much lower convergence points over here at uh, three uh, three hundred and twenty five dollars so now what i'm expect maybe that's a a a b a c we're gonna go much higher but we need a close above that particular level we need a, a, a close a closer to 375 dollars in order for in order to be uh, more confident about a buy uh, otherwise uh, we're gonna see prices go lower you see that was the uh, the move i was expecting and you see we bounce closer to that particular level but now we are in a complete indecision so we need a more confirmation for now i remain bullish on dash but you see confirmation above uh, 375 380 okay so that's it and now uh, let's finish with uh, litecoin now we're gonna do litecoin and another one we're gonna do ripple so we're gonna wrap up in an hour so that's great okay litecoin us dollar and over here what you see litecoin you see boom 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 distribution long sideways movements that's a perfect resistance and take a look now boom resistance now support pointer over here which is the uh, 26 week moving average at 35 dollars so maybe we're gonna go and retest that particular level take a look over here what do we have what do we see yeah that's a convergence between the four weeks moving average and eight weeks moving average if the, if the four weeks moving average crosses below it's gonna go after the 13 week moving average average excuse me and then 21 and then 26 and that huge bearish candle as a huge tail a long tail and that tail is a pointer so it points towards the 35 dollars range okay so that's it so a uh, light coin i'm expecting more moves towards the downside okay so that's it below that particular level below 45 that's a sell and above let's say 54 55 that's a buy above that particular level above 55 that's a buy but you see we have a range and in in that particular range we can go sideways with no uh, direction okay so pay attention and be cautious and finally let's wrap up with ripple let's finish with ripple 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 versus the us dollar okay that one 
over here ripple what can we see and what can we say about the technicals you see huge range you see that particular that great bearish candle over here boom top at uh, 25 uh, 20 yeah 35 cents and low the close at 20 cents and pointer here at 12 cents you see we are in that particular uh, trading range but in the uh, lower half half of that particular trading range and now we are here take a look at the moving averages you see the body of the uh, bullish candle over here we are back in it so we are back in a inside week candle type of pattern and we are going nowhere you see we need a direction we need something we need to be above first of all we need to be above uh, 20 20 and 22 dollars uh, excuse me cents of a dollar over here and if it's below below 16 but now i think that ripple is in a um accumulation uh, accumulation phase because you see uh, that particular uh, cryptocurrency as a utility and all already you can see big banks big institutions governments already they already are using a uh, ripple so ripple as a bright future so now me i'm expecting uh, the uh, the uh, coin price uh, the price of ripple to go much higher but i think that that's a huge uh, accumulation uh, accumulation uh, phase you see uh, there's not a lot of coverage about that particular cryptocurrency but that currency uh, that uh, crypto coin uh, the ripple is uh, very very utilized amongst the uh, institutions and in the uh, financial sectors so uh, ripple as a bright future so uh, that's uh, my personal recommendation uh, take a look at uh, that crypto okay Take a look at that uh, cryptocurrency and uh, do you due diligence and your own research and own investigations and own analysis uh, and analysis but for me ripple uh, is gonna be uh, huge in the near future in, in a window of one to three years uh, let's say 2020 uh, ripple is gonna go much 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 higher okay so that's it okay but now uh, thank you very very much and that's it over here we have my page www.jctream.com i have a consulting company consulting in everything uh, about uh, finance investments working with uh, other companies and with institutions you see institutions uh, like uh, the gusa for uh, precious metals you see you progress over here in spain and also in switzerland all those two are in switzerland also i'm an introducer broker for a london-based uh, broker and also in the consulting space uh, for uh, big businesses and um, and other stuff and all other international uh, commerce and stuff like that in relation with uh, consulting companies and private banks and stuff like that in uh, switzerland so if you want to know more about that about my services and what i can uh, offer so please feel free to uh, send me a message and or uh, the best way to contact me is with the uh, number right here and send me a viber whatsapp or whatever you want or over here we have our my social media networks and also enter Feel free to enter our uh, shop and to see all the uh, prices we have for our services. Okay, so once again, thank you very much. Have a great, great, great trading week and I'll um, see you next week. Okay, bye bye. Have a good one. Ciao.